It was a last minute decision to go to the estate auction. My friend Greg had insisted I join him, saying that these kind of events were gold mines for finding rare antiques, old books, or odd trinkets. I wasn't much into collecting, but Greg had a way of getting me involved in things I normally wouldn't consider. So there I was on a dreary Saturday morning, standing in front of an old mansion with a group of collectors and curious bidders. The house belonged to a man named Victor Halloway, an eccentric recluse who had passed away a few months earlier. From what I'd heard, he had no family, no close friends, and left behind a vast collection of bizarre items. The estate auction was the final chapter of his life, an opportunity for strangers to sift through his belongings, searching for treasure. The auction itself was as ordinary as they come. Furniture, paintings, old clocks, silverware, and even a few dusty trunks were lined up for bidding. I had no real intention of buying anything, but as the auction went on, something caught my eye. It was a box, wooden, intricately carved, and about the size of a small suitcase. It sat on a table near the back, almost unnoticed. There was something about the craftsmanship that drew me to it, though I couldn't explain why. The carvings were strange, geometric patterns, swirling and intersecting in a way that made the box seem almost alive. When it was time to bid on the box, no one else seemed interested. Greg nudged me, telling me to go for it, and, without much thought, I did. I won it for $50, which felt like a steal for something so unique. Maybe there's treasure in, hidden inside, Greg joked as we loaded it into my car. I laughed, but as I placed the box in the back seat, I felt a strange sense of satisfaction, like I'd found something important, something that was waiting for me. Back home, I set the box on my coffee table, staring at it for a while. The carvings were even more intricate than I had first noticed, almost mesmerizing. I tried to open it, but the lid wouldn't budge. There was no lock, no latch, just a perfectly sealed box. I examined it closer, running my fingers over the carvings. As I traced one of the swirling patterns, I felt a faint click. The top of the box shifted slightly. I lifted the lid and it opened smoothly. Inside, there was no treasure, no gold coins or hidden jewels. Instead, there was a single envelope, yellowed with age, and a small, tarnished key. The envelope was addressed simply as, to the owner. Curiosity got the best of me. I opened the envelope, expecting to find some kind of explanation. Instead, I found a single piece of paper with a short, typed message. Do not use the key. Once turned, it cannot be undone. I stared at the note, frowning. What was this supposed to mean? Use the key for what? There were no locks in the box, no compartments or secret drawers, just the key sitting innocuously at the bottom of the box. Greg called later that night to ask about the box, and when I told him about the note, he laughed it off. It's probably some kind of joke, he said, a gimmick to make the box more interesting. You should try using the key. I was skeptical, but after we hung up, I found myself holding the key, turning it over in my hands. It was small and unremarkable, the kind of key you'd expect to find in an old lockbox or a jewelry chest. The more I looked at it, the more I wanted to know what it unlocked. The next few days, I couldn't stop thinking about the key. I searched the box over and over, trying to find some hidden locker mechanism, but there was nothing. Still, the warning in the notes stuck with me. One night, after a very restless evening, I gave in. I picked up the key and studied it again. The message seemed like nonsense, and I was tired of the mystery. Maybe the key had nothing to do with the box at all. Maybe it unlocked something else entirely. After all, old houses like the Holloway Mansion often had secret compartments or hidden rooms. I had nothing to lose, so I decided to see if the key fit any of the locks in my own house. It was on the third try that the key found its place. I was surprised when it slid easily into the lock on the door to the basement. The door had always been stiff, the kind you had to shove open with your shoulder, but now it moved smoothly as I turned the key. I hesitated, remembering the note's warning, but curiosity is a powerful thing, and I'd come too far to stop now. With a deep breath, I turned the key. The lock clicked. 
I pushed open the door and descended down the stairs, the air growing cooler as I went. My basement was unfinished, concrete floors, exposed beams, the usual clutter of old boxes and forgotten things. But tonight it felt different. The air was heavy, almost suffocating, and the silence was oppressive. I stepped forward, holding my phone's flashlight up to see better. There was nothing out of the ordinary at first, just the same basement I'd been in a dozen times before. And then I heard it, a soft, almost imperceptible hum. It was coming from the far corner of the basement, near a pile of old furniture I hadn't touched since I moved in. The sound was low, steady, like the faint buzz of electricity. I moved closer, my pulse quickening. The hum grew louder, filling the basement with an unsettling vibration. I reached the far corner, my hand trembling as I lifted the flashlight higher. There, buried under an old tarp, was another door. I had never noticed it before. The door was made of dark wood, the same swirling patterns from the box carved into its surface. My heart pounded as I reached for the handle. I knew I shouldn't, but something urged me forward. I had already come this far. I turned the handle. The door swung open easily, revealing a narrow, dark passageway. The hum intensified, vibrating through the walls, through my body, filling my mind with a growing sense of dread. I took a step inside, the cold air wrapping around me like a shroud, and then I saw it. It wasn't treasure, it wasn't answers, it was me. Standing at the end of the passageway was a figure identical to me in every way. Same clothes, same face, same terrified expression. It stood perfectly still, staring back at me with wide, empty eyes. I stumbled back, my breath coming in ragged gasps. The figure didn't move, didn't blink. It just watched, its expression frozen in an eerie reflection of my own. I ran. I slammed the basement door behind me, locking it with the key, my hands shaking so badly I could barely turn the lock. The hum had stopped, but the silence was worse. The box sat on the coffee table, the note still lying beside it. Once turned, it cannot be undone. I should have listened. Now, every night, I hear the hum, louder and closer. And I know that whatever I let out of the basement is waiting, waiting for me to make the next move. <laughs>